This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, we used to use the old TV set. No satellite hookups or anything. Just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me, let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. Well, with all the uh, things that have been uh, happening lately in the movies and on television, what with the new Simpsons show and uh, the new Jetsons movie, uh, certainly animation is certainly starting to move back up as far as a, a viable art form and also a commercial art form. So. Tonight we decided to go ahead and uh, really start to get into some of the animation and what better uh, to start with than the animation of Hanna-Barbera. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to turn the thing right over to Marty tonight with a little, her little report of, uh, of uh, the history of Hanna-Barbera. Take it away, Marty. Thank you. This is my report on Hanna-Barbera. <laughs> by Marty Wiley. <laughs> okay, basically these guys are old. Anyway, <laughs> Barbara, whose name is not Barbara, Hannah Bar uh, Mr. Barbara, anyway, Barbara, whatever, he was born in New York City in 1911 in an Italian family. And um, he said Disney was his inspiration. And his first job well, was with... Well, don't they all? Yeah. Not everybody <laughs> does yeah. yeah, Disney inspired me too, right? <laughs> His first job was with the Max Flesher, the people who did Popeye and Betty Boop and real good black and white cartoons for the cinema. Um, he actually quit that job after four days because he didn't think there was a future in it. But through a friend, he found a job with Terry Tunes that was just starting up, and they did like a Heckle and Jekyll. Yeah. Heckle and Jekyll, that's our name. Okay, but Disney actually put Terry Tunes out of business. Yeah. So, uh, he had to find another job. Um, he kind of moved on out west, left the east coast. Um, at the same time, 
Church. The Hannah guy, he was like grew up on the on the West Coast. Well, they have first names too, you know. <laughs> yeah, like Joe and something. <laughs> Joseph, Hannah, and William Barbera. Yeah, like Joe and Bill or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, he first started working with uh, the Harmon Ising Company, who was doing Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. <laughs> yeah, those things. <laughs> and that was the Leon Schlesinger. Schlesinger. <laughs> that was that group. Um, in 1933, they broke with their group, and they started out with started doing Looney Tunes. And about the same time, well, Hannah didn't break with them. He stayed with the Harmon group, and they went with MGM. And MGM was forming their company. That they were doing um, cartoons mm. and movie theaters. Mm. Am I boring you? No. Where's your brother? <laughs> Shut up. That's the I MGM really lion. lion. <laughs> Well, that was sick. Wow. <laughs> Not a very good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, the guys met. They got together in 1938 while working for MGM. And together they created a... Joe, Bill, Bill, Joe. Yeah, it felt like that. <laughs> they created That's this bad. little LJ. cartoon LJ. called LJ. Puss Gets the Boot. And Puss Gets the Boot was the basis for Tom and Jerry. And they worked on Tom and Jerry for like 17 years. They were the artists and the writers of this cartoon and uh, they you know had a nice long run there with MGM and then MGM said we're not making cartoons anymore <laughs> and they just closed shop in one day <coughs> yeah basically so uh, Hannah Barbera decided since they got along so well together and everything to go out for this new wonderful media called television this was the late 50s and that's when they created rough and ready and in order to create this um, TV did not allow very much money. It was like uh, $3,000 per cartoon, and they were used to like a $30,000 budget. <laughs> Tough breaks, guys. So they went back to an old animation technique that was called limited animation, where basically your characters just talk and might wave or, yeah, and you use the same background for the five-minute cartoon. And you notice that when they run or something, their body stays straight and their feet might move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's limited animation. They <laughs> went back to that because... Their mouth was open or closed. Yeah. It was okay, kinda... so that, like, you know, <laughs> drastically went down on the quality. If people sure. know of the old Tom and Jerry cartoons. They're, they're very beautiful. Of course, they were created with a huge budget. Um, they lost the detail, they lost the quality, but they saved like a whole bunch of money. And they got to have long extended houses and things. <laughs> run along and they'd run past that same window or that same over door over several, over several over. times. Well, that's limited animation. <laughs> I don't particularly care for it, but it did bring us a lot of uh, characters because from Rough and Ready, they went on with the Huckleberry Hound, with Yogi Bear, who really oh, my darling. got them like buku money. Hey, boo -boo. <laughs> oh, okay, Yogi. <laughs> okay, and then it's like um, in the 1960s, they were doing so well with the little um, short cartoons that they were able to move into prime time and do the Flintstones. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where we start off. <laughs> because I know as kids, we all watched the, the uh, Huckleberry Hound show yep. with the little oh, five-minute yeah. ditty, mm -hmm. Yaki Doodle, all of those guys. All the same music. So all into it. basically, <laughs> Yogi <laughs> Bear got him, got him in the door so they could do the Flintstones, which uh -huh. was prime time. Yeah, that's right. This We're, we're talking, we're talking um, 7.30, I believe it was on Friday. Oh, it was considered uh, prime uh, time. Just, and <laughs> they actually sold... Um, the show, half of it was bought by the Reynolds Tobacco Company, and half of it was bought by uh, Miles Laboratory. Ooh, real that's sponsors. How it was fin that's how it was financed in the beginning. Yeah. This show was on for six years. That's the amazing thing. I mean, that, uh, I mean of course, it's been in, uh, on Saturday morning and in syndication ever since, pretty much. But, uh, yeah, they went, uh, well, what, 8.30 on uh, Fridays, and then uh, like 7.30 on Thursdays, and Fridays at 7.30 again. Yeah, and they also tried at first, like in 1960, the, the Flintstones started in 62, they tried it with the Jetsons in prime time, but it failed. Right. And so the Jetsons got whisked to Saturday morning and where there, and, they and did there, excellently. And there's only 24 uh, until the new match came out. Yeah. There were only 24 original episodes. So you can, of the if Flintstones you have the Jetsons. Of the Jetsons. Of the Jetsons. Okay. Of the Jetsons, only 24 episodes. Oh, they, there's they, they just, uh, was about three years ago or two years ago, they, they made the new batch, which are markedly inferior. Mm -hmm. 
and, but it did bring yeah. them up to like 45 episodes so they could handle syndication and a lot something better. something I didn't know, this is what I learned in doing my report. Yes. If anyone gets the Comedy Channel, if you're that fortunate and you watch Joe McDokes, Behind the Eight Ball. Yes. The actor's name is George O'Hanlon. He's George Jetson's voice. Wow! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Wow! Oh, I'm so excited. So, uh, and then the, the, okay, Jane Jetson's voice was done by Penny Singleton, who'd been Blondie for right. ever and ever right. in the uh, theaters, in those movies, which are real cute. But uh, the, this was something that Hanna-Barbera had to do, that they hadn't had to do before, was find voices, because Tom and Jerry was noise. Right, right. <laughs> they didn't, they rarely, rarely ever spoke. Uh -huh. And they only had really one voice, and that was old Mammy Two Shoes or whatever. <laughs> <it was>. <laughs> Mammy <laughs> Two Shoes was about the only, and then Tom did say a few words. Okay, I like the one of Tom where he's singing, Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby, <laughs> which is just, it's funny. Okay, trust me, it's funny. So really, the, the two uh, big names that work, and one still works for Hanna-Barbera, is Don Messick, and the late Dawes Butler worked for them up until his death in 1988. So those guys are pretty much the voice of everybody. <laughs> yep. yep. Well, we didn't um, didn't didn't Mel do like well, Barney? Mel or? Blank also did quite but a bit. Mel few. Mel usually did background characters or mm -hmm. or he like was one Barney time Robert. guests. Right. Right. He was Barney right. Robert. Right. Other than Harvey Korman did a lot of voices for the Flintstones. Well, yes. Mr. Spacely too. Uh, yeah, I believe he was <laughs> Mr. Spacely. Okay, okay. But he wasn't really the major major. Right. Major, major. Which is which is what caused problems when they did shows like that uh, uh, in the seventies when they did uh, when when Hanna Barbera I think realized that we have the copyrights to thousands of characters that we only use for like one season, so they put them all into one show, which is why you saw that show with the well, I can't remember the name of the show not with the, the art. not the not space, the yogis the great yogis um, space race or whatever the, 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 there were the, several the, the Olympic thing yeah. the one with. And that's when Yogi's Ark and all that. That's when people yeah. realized that there were, weren't all that many people doing the voices because a lot of characters had the exact same voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Dawes Butler did lots and lots of voices, but he changed. He was like Huckleberry Ham right. with the Southern draw. He was Top Cat right. with the uh, New York voice. Um, he was Yogi Bear also. Mm -hmm. So he had, you know, a rank, but if you ever notice, all the Hanna-Barbera superhero guys, they all had the same voice. Yeah. And they were all uh, Gary Owens, weren't they? Most of Quite a few he of them were. Uh, the, the, the phantom guy, the, well, Blue, the Falcon, Blue Falcon. Blue Falcon. Blue Falcon. And that dumb dog of his, Dino Mutt. Dino Mutt. <laughs> well, here's sort of <laughs> a... Here's Blue Falcon, here is, buddy! Here is, like, <laughs> if we can get a, get a person on this, here's like a big combination they did called Yogi's Treasure Hunt with like... Oh, that is Every nice character, character, even Mr. Dick Dastardly, it's got... Dick Dastardly and Muttley. <laughs> <laughs> it's there got we go. Oggy Doggy in it. I mean, that's basically like everybody who like really made it famous in the early 60s. Top Cat's in there. Um, I don't know, you just see them all in there. What exactly is the robot thing? What is that? I forget. Heck, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think that's something they just made up for oh, okay. this. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't it. Yeah, Not we got to put a new character in with a new show. Oh, okay. That's my big, uh, yeah, I don't like it that they put all the characters in right. Yogi's Space Race and Yogi's big Treasure Hunt. The Laugh Olympics, that's yeah. what The Laugh Olympics, <laughs> all that stuff was like <laughs> crappy. Well, that's the, we're, we're jumping ahead there because there's right, like a lot of good single oh, shows sure. that were in between there. We well, Let me... Oh, which one you want to talk about? I got the book. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, let's um, you talk, and she'll show the book. Okay, like in the um, the mid sixties, the mid sixties there, and then mm -hmm. work up to the seventies, we had a lot of the adventure, the good adventure shows. Um, well, well, Johnny Quest, we didn't look at that. Johnny Quest was it started off in prime time, and that was probably the first good adventure cartoon. Although um, I'm sure a colleague over here is gonna say something about the animation and everything. You, when you're a kid, you, you don't look for perfection, well, really. I you're did. looking for the uh, you're looking for the, really, the story there. You're looking really for I was always looking for yeah. the action this, personally. This is Johnny Quest for kids that don't know. This is Johnny Quest. This is his friend Haji who was like picked up on the streets in India and just stayed with the Quests forever. Ever. And just this like is it. Bandit, the only dog in Hanna-Barbera's uh, library that doesn't 
have an obnoxious whiny bark. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have a bark, doesn't have a laugh. Yeah, bandit bark. Well, I mean, it doesn't like have a, a, a silly, a silly, it's not a silly character. It's like a, a real dog. It's the only real dog. <laughs> and of course, Johnny Quest played by Tim Matheson. Yeah, Tim later, Matheson. Later to be in Animal the Animal House. House and, uh, several, just several other movies. Oh, yeah. We just saw him the other night in something there. 1941. 1941, 1941. yeah, he's in there. Uh, golly, but um, then, um, Okay, we go along here and we've got other adventure shows. We had Space Ghost. That was probably... Move. Do the voice. Space <laughs> Ghost! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Space Ghost. <laughs> Those great action toys. Yeah, now, now, Space Ghost pretty much works real nice on this uh, limited animation because space always looks the same. This is yeah. true. Uh -huh. you know, you're always going to see the same background, but it's always going to be stars. You've got Jan and Jace there, the twins, and I think Jan, well... Jan's the girl, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. Jan's, the you name girl. Jan's the girl. I Jason. think uh, she had the num uh, one of the voices that's reoccurred through Hanna Barbera and right. quite a few other cartoons. Pamela Ferdin. Oh, she's <laughs> <not>. <laughs> I think we'll talk more about her in another show, but that Pamela Ferdin, she's always showing up in these darn things. And then they had their little monkey. What was, what was the blip? Blip. <laughs> blip. Blip the space monkey. I, 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 I wasn't too, I'm not, I'm never fond really of the, the, the sidekick animals. I yeah. mean, give me the adventure, but right. I think they could have left the sidekick animals out. Like, you had that one. Okay, then you have, um... Well, well, of course, with Bandit, you're always dragging this little dog around. The little dog's always screwing up. Leave the dog at home. Well, they, they couldn't the really. It's the like dog. they, uh... I know you travel a lot, kid, but put him on a leash. Exactly. Did you ever see... None of those dogs were ever on a leash. This is true. Oh. A little monkey could have been on a leash. Broken leash laws. Major infraction in, in most big cities. <laughs> Not in space. <laughs> in space, no one can go? break your <laughs> leash. <laughs> <laughs> and if that leash does break, well, by golly, there's You're Blip gone. just floating no away. <laughs> <laughs> space goes, turn around. We lost Blip. <laughs> Too bad. Oh, sorry, kids. <laughs> we can't Don't turn around now. The... We're after the mantis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so then they, they, uh, they had, well, Space Ghost was in the future. Then they jumped back to the past. They had Mighty Mitor. Oh, it's going to make me look for Mighty Mitor. And oh, yeah. um, <laughs> let's see, Mighty Mitor and Shira was his, his girlfriend. Ooh, and that let's sounds see, close um, to something. <laughs> she had a little brother who had this dumb flying thing that he used to, it's a, a dodo he bird is. or something oh, that he would yeah. fly around on, and he would pretend to be Mitor. They could have left him at home, too. They could have left both of them. Just lock them back in the cave somewhere, <laughs> throw some rocks in front of them. We don't need those guys. But no, they had to have them, too. And then, uh, well, let me see. There was the Moby Dick cartoon. Well, that's got two little tiny yeah. And it had sure. two kids and, what, a, a seal or something. A seal named Scooby, which brought uh -huh. us to like, uh -huh. Hanna-Barbera's other big one. And I think they said, I think, well, I grew up late near Kings Island, so I heard a lot of this propaganda. Scooby-Doo was supposedly the one that raked in the most dough and the ones kids wanted to see more often than Fred Flintstone or anybody wow. else. Well, that's, that's kind of true because that Scooby... That was in the 70s when the big Mecca Kings Island opened there. Yeah, Scooby, right. um, Scooby just kind of appealed to kids. He and, he and Shaggy probably appealed more to kids right, than Freddy right. and... Um, <laughs> Who was it? Freddie and Thelma and uh, Thelma and Freddie. Well, here's a oh, what was, what's of the other two. girl's name? Daphne. 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 Yeah. Daphne. Lovely little Daphne. Oh, that's well, that's Scooby there. Not, not Scrappy, dude. <laughs> this that's is, where they. This Scooby. is Scooby. This is Scrappy, who's like obnoxious, but but Scooby Doo's like pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was it was a cool show. But um, Shaggy hey, and Scooby, Scooby they um they were always I mean they were like. They're like the kids, you know, they always wanted to eat, and then when something scary happened, they ran away from it. <laughs> you know what? Do you think that it's possible that Scooby-Doo might have been an, a an ancestor of Astro? Well, this is quite think possible. Of that voice. <laughs> <laughs> in the same Big old Great in the Dane. Same line. In the same, yeah. And yeah, it's like as, as they go further into space, then they just turn blue or something. Like that. <laughs> Very possible, because I mean, you know, here's here's Astro. Which okay, a little a little gray, but it's like yeah. sometimes you'll see Astro. He's blue, man. Yeah. Like what in space and in, in the future yeah. have they no have they yeah, no that's, heat? That's like that's like a major thing I've noticed in Hanna Barbera. A lot of the characters have gone through color change. Well, like yeah, Cindy um, Bear. Cindy, Cindy right. Bear. She was started Astro. off brown. She turned blue. It's and like when they put her in deep freeze for something. We'll put her in deep Some freeze till we need her. Then we pull her out. And when they revive and when they revive Tom and Jerry, Tom's gone. 
Tom's gone to blue. Color. Yeah, Tom is blue. blue. They, it's, a, it's a blue gray. It must be a cheap color. They got gallons probably. of it. So let's just probably take a paintbrush and do them all. And and little Jerry Mouse has gone through different shades of brown. Yeah, he's. I don't know. I like some continuity in in my life. <laughs> Be it just the color of the uh, character. Well, you'd think that once they once they got along there, they would um, improve the color. No, it's like no. the further along they go, the worse the color gets. It's like right. we leave these stills out in the sunshine or in yeah. the bright light, <laughs> so the color just fades That's out of true. them or something. And they started using the cheap um, computer animation, which I really noticed, really more in the later 70s and right. I yeah. kind of stopped watching cartoons. And when they when they stuck them all together, well, the they're in the same got things. So bad. They. Uh, See, computer, you can actually do some wonderful things with computer because parts of the new Jetson movie actually have some yeah, computer but animation, but it's not the cheap This was the beginning, the stuff. This was computer the beginning stuff. Right, right. right. In the, in the <coughs> mid, late 70s when they just started using the computers a lot and stuff, and it was more like they were playing, and I think it got cheap there for a while. I mean, I, I turned it off, and the characters weren't that. Like, they were doing the combinations. Right. And... They added Scooby Doo's entire family in order to keep that oh, show going. Oh, Scooby Doo, Scooby, -Doo, Scooby, -Doo, Scooby D, Scooby Dum, <laughs> and then that Scrappy Doo. That went on forever. I mean, yikes. Doopy Doo. Who yeah. knows what Who else? Cares? I know yeah. one of my favorites when I was a kid was Top Cat. Not Top Cat, hey. And they've pretty much he's he's been well. This is Top Cat at Officer oh. Dibble. Hey, they've got the song over there. And they got the song. Top over Cat. Here. Doo. Okay, this was like a real cool cartoon. This this poor character who was like he was like a major star. Shut up. <laughs> he was like major, okay. So now he's like, what what do they do? They they he had that whole band of cats and they all had right. such neat personalities. And what do they do? They shovel Top Cat onto Yogi's space race art. Yeah, adventure. some sort of deal. And the whole character of Top Cat is lost now. Well, the lost character. <laughs> you, you lose Top Cat. Gone you forever. have, um, well, let's jump back here to the uh, 60s, early 70s. You had the whole wacky races. There were oh, yeah. several cars in the, the wacky races. You have uh, Peter Perfect in we his... We've got, we got uh, cars down here. This is the amazing thing. In Act, his... Uh, models. Well, of, uh, whatever it's called. I, all, I, all I can think of was the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper, but that's not that, his that's car. That's Tom's leg. It's some, he's had some kind Thank of big, you. powerful car there. And there's... Um, Penelope Pit Stop and her um, and their no, what's her the compact pussycat was her car. You have Dick Dastardly and his yeah, mean machine or whatever it was called. Oh there. there we go. And you had the That's um, Penelope Pit Stop there on your screen. The the creepy the creepies and their um their creepy mobile. Mm-hmm. There was a gruesome twosome in their creepy yes. mobile. Yeah. That's there who they go. were. But then um Okay, and they were always racing to get from someplace to someplace else, and maybe, well, they used, they always had a winner. Everybody got to win, except for Dick Dastardly, because yeah, he was always that. trying to make everybody else lose. He was always doing something sneaky to make everybody else lose. Always had these wonderful gadgets so he could... Actually, the Wacky Races is based on the Great Race. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. The Great Race, because the same, um, you've same got uh, plot line. The, uh, the evil character in there, a lot of his things... They took right and put them in the Dick Dastardly. Yep. You can watch the Great Race. The Turbo can... Terrific. Ah. If, if you look, okay. Well, if the you Turbo look at Terrific the car, is Peter Perfect. If you look at the car that's um, used in the Great Race by uh, um, 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 Jack Lemmon. Jack Lemmon. Can't remember. And the Peter Falk. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the cars, it's like. Well, there's a lot of stuff ripped out of that car and put in. Put in exactly. The, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the rockets on the back yeah, are in exactly. there. Apart. This thing in the front here in the Great Race, they used it to melt snow when uh -huh. they were going through well, the Arctic. Okay, here's the, the two movies they say they used were the Great Race and those magnificent men in their flying machine. Okay. Because remember, the wacky racers did go up into the, they all had their little airplanes. Well, see, that, the, Dick Dastardly and the... Dick Dastardly and Yankee Doodle Pigeon. Well, that that whole show there. They, well, that's see, his that, whole crew. But that grew <laughs> off of the. Uh, and that's the that grew that away from the, from the wacky races there. So they did base a lot of that on that too. But see, it's like once they had the wacky races, okay, then they chose, they took out Penelope Pitstop, put her in a show, The Perils of Penelope Pitstop, and they took Dick Dastardly out right and put him in the show where they're chasing Yankee Doodle Pigeon, and yeah. so um, they they yank out Penelope Pitstop and the Ant Hill Mob. Mm -hmm. And they stick them in there, and then from there they just yanked further <laughs> and put them into one of those other darn shows too, which well, were, was Mutley's really silly. Mutley's gone a long way. Dick well, Mutley went a long way because he shows up on in the Yogi Bear stuff. Yeah, he shows up in stuff. Well, Mutley's probably the most prolific dog <laughs> yes. for not keeping the same character <laughs> that yeah, Hanna Barbera has. <laughs> 
Actually, Muttley started in the movie Hey There, Chogi Bear, but his name wasn't Muttley. It was... Mugger. Mugger. <laughs> Mugger. Mugger. Okay, Mugger. <laughs> oh, mugger. Oh, come on, Mugger. Give me back my hand. Come and, on, and Mugger. It's like, they, it's like they clicked on that. They clicked on that. That obnoxious doggy, and he's been Muttley forever. Yeah, and he has gone through a lot of color changes. He's yes, been blue, he has. He's been gray. He's been brown. Oh, he's yeah. gone from brown to gray to blue. And see, he's another one. He's just throw him in a deep freeze. There, and he comes out blue. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Disney wasn't frozen. Yeah. The Hanna Barbera characters <laughs> were cryogenically <laughs> preserved. So who knows what happened to Disney? But then we've got other great. There were other great adventure cartoons back there too. There were, um, well, Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles. Frankenstein Jr. was this great big gigantic robot, yes. and there's this little kid that rode around with him, Buzz, <laughs> and they lived up in this mountain somewhere, and they flew around and they saw a thing. And then the Impossibles were these three. Superhero guys. There were um, Multi Man, there was Fluid Man, and right. there was Coil Man. Right. And they went around and they solved Impossible. different crimes too. Well, of and course, the crimes that they solved were pretty much the same ones that Scooby Doo saw, which were pretty much the same ones that Josie and the Pussycat had to solve, Witch Cassidy. Everyone basically, it was always the same crime. Well, in, well, and in fact, Hollywood see, Hollywood. now I like the adventure, the adventure shows better because at least they based them, they had something else there. It's like once you started with Scooby Doo and Josie and the Pussycats, it was like they seemed fantastic, but then it just boiled down to somebody that was just trying to swindle some money off of somebody right. or mm -hmm. something. It was nothing really great. There were right. there were no ghosts, there, there, there are no monsters, it's all just people. <laughs> and that just kind of that kind of ruins the effect. Of a cartoon or something, you're you're here, you're you're, you're Hollywood, you man. You can, you can, do, you whatever can you do whatever want. you want. You can get people to believe exactly. you, but no, no. there are no ghosts. <laughs> There's it's just somebody in a suit. He's oh, he's projecting a picture over here, so it's not really a ghost. He's just <laughs> yeah. trying to scare you, and he wants to get the money away from the witch, the rich widow that who's always is just to almost be gonna have a heart attack or something, right. and yeah. so. It's just and then, and then I think it's like a shame what they've done to the Flintstones. Well, wait, no I don't know if we want to get into that because uh, from, from what I've been told, we have like maybe a minute or so left, believe it or not. <laughs> Are you so, serious? So we, we have I've certainly more than so material for Barbera show two? number two. We'll have that next time. <laughs> so it'll be very exciting. Yeah, it's a two-part. It's a two-part. So, so we uh, we'll be continued. And, uh, Hey, uh, just uh, so you remember, we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here at Vast Wasteland. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, so turn and on hey, if, it, if it's not just, um, <laughs> if, it, if the next time we might finish up with Hanna-Barbera, so we might get able to get into some of the other cartoons, too. Sure, so why not? If, if we finish up with these what guys. What the heck? But hey. So for all of us here at uh, Vast Wasteland, uh, We'll see you next time with more Hanna-Barbera. Good night, everybody! Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.